Good evening, everyone. Who's with us? I see Gabriel with us, Louis with us. Hello, Louis. How are you? Hello, Rock. How are you? Baruch Hashem. How are you all doing? Baruch Hashem. You're doing all fine. Thank you. Are you safe? Be safe. Be safe. Baruch Hashem. Be looking after ourselves. My children are looking after themselves. More than that, I can't. I can't do more than that. Can't ask for more than that. <laughs> yeah. As long as we're all safe. That's the most important. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. That most important. There's nothing more important than that. I must be. Hello, Rob. I I Mark. Hello, oh, Marky, talk. baby. How are you doing? Hello, Louis. Hello, Marky. Hey. There's nothing like Marky. Who's else with yeah. us? All the Chachamim. All the Chachamim. <laughs> Ivan joining us. Hello, Ivan. How are you? Ivanovich, how are you? I think that he put it on silence. Ivanovich, are you okay? I am all ears. Okay, you all ears. Good, good, good. We'll give another few minutes for more people to join us, and then we'll speak about the show. There's more people joining us. I see Ivanovich. Long time. Hi, Hero. Long time. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody? Oh, 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 oh. What's happening? How are you, my man? Oh, yeah, good. And you? How's your right. Looking you after yourself. Trying as best yeah. as we can. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, you have to, you have to. Just look after yourself. Yeah, good to see you all. How are you, Ivan? Good yeah. to see you. It's good to see you. It's been a long time. Where have you been? This and that, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Lost. at least... Oh, are you being lazy again? Oh. I see Shmuli joining us. Hello, Shmuli. I see Adrian. Hey, with Adrian. You? Oh, Hashem, how are you all? Good. We'll give another few more minutes. We'll see more people joining us. Who else joining us? Let me just make sure. Who's else with us? Gabriel. See Gabriel with us. Hello, Gabriel. It's nice to see you with us. There's more coming. Who's coming? I see Stephen Kabetnik joining us. Just take a few more minutes and then we'll start the show. Bezrat Hashem. I see Stephen is with us. Stephen, Erev Tov. Thank you for joining us. Okay, Stephen, are you with us? Yeah. I say, Erev Tov, how are you? Baruch Hashem, yourself, Rav. Yom, 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 yom. Kul Hashem Kitov, Kilo Olam Hasdo. Amen. Okay, so we're going to start Parashat Vayet Hanan. Parashat Vait Hanan, uh, and I'm going to do introduction, the summary regarding Parashat Vait Hanan. I'm going to mute everyone. Louis, when we're ready to read, you just unmute yourself. Thank you, Rolf. Muting everyone. Everyone is muted. Okay. So, Bezrat Hashem, Naseven Atliah, I would like to delegate the show. Leilui Nishmat Esther Kaden Bat Ketia, Mordechai Ben Rahma, that's our friend, late Moti Bafri, Harav Avram Haim Ben Eliezer Yaakov, that's the late Rabbi Tenza, the Rosh Yeshiva, Tamar Bat Zehava, Rahel Bat Malka Sultana, Yaakov Salomon Ben Farha, Dvor Arut Bat Beila, Vehaim Eliyahu Ben Yeshaya, and Nishmatam Tiet Surab Tsurahim. לרפואת ליאור בת מרים, מנשה נג'י בן פרחה, אורנה בלומה בת מרים, הרב אברהם בן מרינה, הרב שלמה יהודה בן דליה, הרב משה בן דבורה, מרדכי דוד בן לאה, משה, יהודי, משה בן יהודית, יוסף בן אסתר, חנה שרה בת דבורה, דבורה בת אסתר, שלמה פנחס בן שיינה פישה, וחונה טוביה בן 
שאול זליג הכהן. And uh, who else we have here? שושנה בת דבורה. I have שושנה בת דבורה. בעזרת השם רפואה שלמה to all of them and to all חולי ופצועי עמו ישראל בכל מקום שהם. אוקיי, okay, רבותיי, פרשת ואתחנן, we're going to do a summary. At the beginning of the parsha we see something very interesting about the parsha. We see that משה רבנו pledge davening to הקדוש ברוך הוא that הקדוש ברוך הוא will allow him to enter the land of Eretz Yisrael. A door that HaKadosh Baruch Hu refused to let him, we'll speak about it in a Shaul, HaKadosh Baruch Hu then took him to the head of the mountain and show him the land of Eretz Yisrael from the top of the mountain, Moshe Rabbeinu see the entire land of Eretz Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu warned Bnei Yisrael that they obligate to fulfill the mitzvot that they received, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu given them, that not only that, that they're not allowed to subtract or to add up on a mitzvot. We'll speak about it also, please, God in the show, and we'll explain what's the idea behind it, the fundamental idea. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu warned Bnei Israel not to forget and to get used to the life in the land of Eretz Israel, that by that, that they get used to the life in Eretz Israel, has v'shalom, that can lead them to worship idol, and then they have to go to exile from the land of Eretz Israel. Later on, Moshe chose three, uh, three different, um, what do you call it, refuge city uh, over the Jordan Valley, and those, those um, city called Betel, Ramot, Ramot, sorry, and Golan. Those are the three uh, refuge city across the Jordan rivers, that's the name. Moshe Rabbeinu then gather Bnei Israel and tell them again the Ten Command. Today we'll spend a bit of time about the Ten Command, but we'll do it differently. We're not going to explain the mitzvah. We're going to explain the idea behind them. Be'ezrat Hashem, we'll speak about it later in the show. After that, Moshe Rabbeinu tell Bnei Israel the famous verse that all of you know, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Ehad. Okay, and command Bnei Israel to understand that they must not worship any other idols that accept HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Then he commanded them about mitzvah tefillin and mitzvah mezuzah, obviously, towards the end of the parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu warned Bnei Israel also to refrain from married out of the faith, not marrying the goin, and also Moshe Rabbeinu command Bnei Israel to tell the miracle that the Almighty done with them, okay, in the land of Egypt. That means the ten plague and all the other miracles that Hakadosh Baruch Hu done to Bnei Israel. In Parashat Vaithanan, there is eight positive command and four negative command. That's basically a summary to Parashat Vait Hanan. And now, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to start. Louis, please unmute yourself. We're going to start Parashat Vait Hanan. And the Parsha starts like this. Vait Hanan el Adonai ba'etai le'emor. I employed Hashem at this time saying. Okay. The Torah tell us that Moshe Rabbeinu pledged to the Almighty in that time saying, we have to understand what's happening here. First of all, Moshe Rabbeinu davened to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that allow him to enter Eretz Israel. And that time, just before Bnei Israel was ready to enter Eretz Israel. That means after 40 years in the wilderness that the Jewish people was in the wilderness, Moshe Rabbeinu pledged to the Almighty, please allow me to enter the land of Eretz Israel. To say, we'll explain what it means to say also in a show. But first, let's start with the word Vait Hanan. Vait Hanan, if we take the gematria of Vait Hanan, is 515. In Hazal, in Midrash Devarim Rabbah, on the book of Dvarim in chapter 11, verse 10, said that from here, 
that it's said by Tanan. Moshe Rabbeinu hinting to us that he davened to HaKadosh Baruch Hu 515 prayers until the Almighty told them, Pasop, stop, stop, Pasop, stop. Tosef Daber Elai Od Badavar Azeh. Please stop, don't ask me anymore on that pledge. That's mean that Hazal explained that Moshe Rabbeinu Daven 515 prayers he pledged to HaKadosh Baruch Hu 500 15 times to enter the land of Eretz Israel until the Almighty say, no, no more. Don't daven to me anymore. Don't speak to me about that subject anymore. Hazal tell us a secret that if Moshe Rabbeinu would daven one more, one more pray, he will enter Eretz Israel, 516. And today I'm gonna do with you a depth. I'm gonna take you to a different level in Sheol that I never done it before with you. It's a lot of, Gumarot, a lot of depths, about 516. It's going to be a little bit heavy, but I will explain. But first, let's understand what's happening with 515. Right, Hanan, we say Gematria 515, 515 prayers. Not only that, the word, the word Fila without the Yud, 515. The word Shira, Shira, it means singing. It's 515 again. We have to understand what's happening. Moshe Rabbeinu Daven to Akadosh Baruch Hu, 515 prayers. Until Akadosh Baruch Hu said to him, stop, don't continue. And Hazal explained to us something extraordinary, that if Moshe, like I explained earlier, would Daven one more, he would merit to enter Eretz Israel. We have to understand, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu, stop, don't continue. Don't daven one more prayer. And it's very important to understand one, why one more prayer can change everything. So I saw, I'm going to start with the Gemara in Masechet Sota, the Gemara in Masechet Sota in page nine, folio one. Hazal explained like this that whatever Moshe Rabbeinu done, the enemies or the wicked people cannot destroy. The enemies of the Jewish people cannot destroy. And what does it mean? And we have to understand. Moshe Rabbeinu created the tabernacle. Tabernacle never destroyed by no one. Moshe Rabbeinu created all the Urim and Tumim. Okay? Nothing happened to them. They been gone to Geniza, where they've been buried. They've been buried under Harabait. That I want to tell you something that the Urim and Tumim, the Aaron, the Ark, the Holy Ark, all of those was not exist on the second temple. It was exist only on the first temple, Bet Amikdash Arishon. On second Bet Amikdash, no one knew them. No one knew where they are. So they've been buried, they've been hired. So what is the connection? Hazal tell us in the Gemara that whatever Maasei Adaf Shel Moshe and also Maasei Adaf Shel David, whatever David HaMelech done, no one can destroy the enemy of the Jewish people. David HaMelech didn't build Bet HaMikdash, the first Bet HaMikdash, that was his son Shlomo. But David HaMelech done the foundation in the Western world and no one can destroy it. As much that they tried to destroy the Western world, they couldn't. So Hazal say and explain like this. If Moshe Rabbeinu would daven one more prayer, that that will bring it to 516 prayers, he will enter Eretz Israel. And if Moshe Rabbeinu will enter Eretz Israel, one of the mitzvot that they have when you enter Eretz Israel, Hazal say that number one, to build Bet Amikdash. Number two, to appoint a king. Number three, to destroy the descendants of Amalek, to kill all the Amalek. So if Moshe Rabbeinu will build Bet Amikdash, it will never be destroyed. Hazal say, Akadosh Baruch Hu knew it, that whatever Moshe Rabbeinu do cannot be destroyed. And if Has Shalom, Bnei Israel will sin and will do Averot, 
then HaKadosh Baruch Hu cannot destroy Bet HaMikdash like he done. He'll have to take his anger and destroy who? Has v'shalom? The Jewish nation. Has v'shalom? Lo yakum v'lo yeh. So say that the main reason the Mepharshim explained that Moshe Rabbeinu didn't enter Eret Yisrael because HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew that in the future Bnei Yisrael will sin and will worship idols, Avodah Zara, then idolatry, Gilui Arayot, then Shpichut Damim, that that's murder, Lo Alenu, and second Bet Amigdash, we know that was Sinat Hinam, Lo Alenu, that was worse than those three, Lashon Ara and Sinat Hinam, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take his anger and what? Has Veshalo, and destroy, I don't want to mention who. So say HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I'd rather destroy my own house that make from stone and from wood and not destroy the Jewish people. That's one explanation. Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu stop Moshe Rabbeinu from praying 516 prayers? But I want to go with you to a different level, very, very depth and very, very depth. Focus with me. I'll stop. If you don't understand, just put the stop on a screen and unmute and I'll give you a chance uh, to ask the question and I'll explain. I'm gonna go a bit deep, okay? What is the fundamental idea, Rabotai, be behind 516? There's a book that called Imre Noam. Imre Noam is a book that been written by Rav Yoram Abarjel, Zecher Tzadik Vikadosh Livracha. And he actually bringing that's commentary in the name of Rabbi Yaakov Yeshua Plak. Rabbi Yeshua Plak, Rabbi Yaakov Yeshua Plak, born in the city of Krakow in Poland 341 years ago. And he wrote a book, Pnei Yeshua, the famous book, Pnei Yeshua. Pnei Yeshua is a book that speak, that, that it's a commentary on all the Shas and all the Gemarot. And in a Gemara, Listen to that. Masechet Brachot Daf Lamed Bet Amud Aleph, that means 32 folio one. It says like this. He say that the word Elohim, the Almighty, not Adnut, Elohim, is Gematria, the word of it is the, the Gematria of it, okay, is 86. The word Elohim, Rashi in Sefer Bereshit, Rashi in Sefer Bereshit, at the beginning of Sefer Bereshit, in chapter one, verse one, Rashi say, because it says, Bereshit bara Elohim, et ha-shamay vet ha-aretz. Okay, that's the creation. He said the word Elohim actually referring, listen to that, to the character trade of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that called judgment. That, that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu that judged the word with judgment. He doesn't have mercy. When Hazal explained when the word Adnut, Amonai, referring to compassion and mercy. He says, Rabbi Yeshua Plek say like this, Rabbi Yaakov Yeshua Plek, I have to be more specific about it. He said, if you take the gematria of Elohim, it's 86. Multiplied by six, you get 1,000. Okay, you'll get, uh, sorry, you'll get 516. Okay, don't know where I come with 1,000. He said 516. He said that if Moshe Rabbeinu will reach to 516, everything gonna be changed in the world. What does it mean? In Sefer Bereshit, I'm going back to Sefer Bereshit. In Sefer Bereshit, when it's speaking about the creation, from verse one to verse five, Bereshit, bara Elohim, et ha-shamayim ve-et ha-aretz, he said that there it said, vayhi or, then he explained everything. It said that the word Elohim, the word Elohim mentioned exactly six times. Why dafka six times? Hazal in a Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, explain something extraordinary. You know why Dafka six time it mentioned Elohim regarding the creation? Because in heaven, Akadosh Baruch Hu have six court. That mean they have a house of court that they are gonna give you the name that those in charge about judgment, 
What does this mean? I will explain now. There is in heaven six different court and each court is a different kind of judgment. When people do sin, Akadosh Baruch Hu bring judgment to the world. And now Alenu, I'm gonna say it quick because I don't wanna give them energy. I don't wanna give those court energy because it's mystical thing. I'm gonna go through it fast and it's not important the name. It's called Ketsef, Af, Haima, Mashhit, Mashbir, Machle. Those are the six different court that there is in heaven. When people do sin in the world, certain court come to action and he being judged, the world being judged. It doesn't make a difference if he's Jewish or not Jewish. And then that court, if he see that the people done sin and the mitzvot and the averot is not equal, let's say that there is more sin than mitzvot, it's coming to action. Akadosh Baruch Hu allow them to act. Say, Rabbi, listen to that, Rabbi Yaakov Yeshua Plak. He say, Moshe Rabbeinu knew that in heaven there is six different court. And he knew because he was the father of all the prophet Moshe Rabbeinu. He knew that for the future, Bnei Israel will sin. He said like this, if Al Daven 516, 516 prayers, I'm going to cancel all of these six court. That means all of those court that judge the world in judgment, that if they do anything wrong, I'm going to change them. That means I'm going to turn all of these six court to compassion and mercy. Listen to the power of Moshe Rabbeinu. Akadosh Baruch Hu knew that it's not the world need sometime. People need to get punished for their sin. He decided that he's gonna stop Moshe. Why? Because if Moshe will dive in 516 prayers, all of those court, all of those judgment gonna change. And that's it, it's finished. There is no more judgment in the world. People will sin. People will do the bad thing. There is no judgment in the world. Akadosh Baruch Hu said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Thank you very much, Moshe Rabbeinu, until here. Pasop, stop. I want you to stop now on 515. I don't want you to continue. Because if you dive in one more, you're going to turn this world to completely world of compassion and mercy. So many of you say, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? That people will take it to a different level. That people will see that there is no more judgment in the world. They'll do only sin. They're not going to do good. People will do the bad. Kadosh Baruch Hu knew it. Therefore, he stopped Moshe Rabbeinu on 515, one before. So now all of you are going to say, wait. So why did he let them dive in 515? Stop them after the first one. Explain to them. There's a secret behind it. And we'll get to it. And we'll explain why Dafka Dat. We'll explain to it just now. But... We have to understand a second question that we have to understand that been asked by Rabbi Avram Evan Ezra, the Evan Ezra, the famous Evan Ezra. The famous Evan Ezra is Rabbi Avram Evan Ezra. He born in a city of Toledo in Spain, 932 years ago. And he explained like this. I don't understand. Moshe Rabbeinu in the book of Dvarim, it's a book of rebuke, Mishneh Torah. He rebuked him, the Jewish people. In the middle of the book, in the second parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu decided not to rebuke Bnei Israel at the beginning of the parashat Vayit Hanan. What does he do? He tell them the story that he pledged to Akadosh Baruch Hu 515 prayers. What's the connection? That's to rebuking. Where is the connection? What is the connection? That's what asked Rabbi Avram and Ben Ezra. Rabbi Avram and Ben Ezra, just to give you a little bit of history about him, he was the son-in-law of Rabbi Uda Levi. He married his daughter. Rabbi Avram and Ben Ezra was a very poor person. Whatever he tried to make money, he couldn't make money. 
One day he decided to sell Kindle. Listen to that. And that time, obviously, it was no ESCOM. You know, not that there is any difference between us. And anyway, so he was selling candles. Even candle in that time that they used to use lights, he couldn't make money. Then he decided, you know what? I'll sell tachrichim lo alenu. Tachrichim is the clothes that they're wearing lo alenu, the deceased when they bury. People stop dying. <laughs> he couldn't make money. And he used to, he wrote a lot of poems, he was a beautiful writer. And he was a great scholar person. It's maybe one day I'll tell you the story, how was the shidr between him and the son of Rabbi Uda Levi. It's a long story, so I'm not gonna say that. So he asked that question and he said like this. He said, you know why in the middle of the book that called the rebuke book, Mishneh Torah, that Moshe Rabbeinu rebuke him, they said, Come and tell him about that, that he's pledging and he's davening to Akadosh Baruch Hu 515, sorry, praise that Akadosh Baruch Hu will allow him to enter to Eretz Israel. And then Akadosh Baruch Hu said, Say Rabbi Abraham Ibn Ezra, here the fathers of all the prophets, the king of Israel, Moshe Rabbeinu, that gone up to heaven, brought the Torah down. You know, all the angels in heaven wanted to enter Eretz Israel, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't allow him. He said that Moshe Rabbeinu Dafka in the middle of all the rebuke said that to Bnei Israel, you know why? That Bnei Israel will understand and will appreciate the land of Eretz Israel. That every sin that you do, like Moshe Rabbeinu, the small sin, instead of speaking to the rock, he hit the rock, he been punished not to enter the land of Eretz Israel. It's not so simple, the Mepharshim go in depth on it, what was behind it, but that's not for now. Moshe Rabbeinu here trying to show Bnei Israel, be careful when you're entering the land of Eretz Israel. How much careful when you're entering Eretz Israel? Because Eretz Israel considered the palace of the Almighty, the house of the Almighty. And when a person do Avera, in a palace, it's not the same like a person do in a country. Who cares if he done something wrong in a country? But when you come to the palace and you do averot and you do sin, you have to be careful. So here Moshe Rabbeinu come and said to Bnei Israel, listen, I dove into Akadosh Baruch Hu 550. I pledge to him, I beg to them, please let me into Eretz Israel. And Akadosh Baruch Hu didn't let me. Here Moshe Rabbeinu come to tell Bnei Israel the importance of Eretz Israel and how they have to be careful not to sin in Eretz Israel. Now it says Le'emor to say the, the pasuk, the verse, end up Le'emor. And that will answer us, why did Moshe Rabbeinu dive in 515th Philot and HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't stop him? HaKadosh Baruch Hu allowed him. He can stop them after the first one. He said, listen, Moshe Rabbeinu, pass up. You're not going to enter it, Israel, no. He allowed them to dive in, to pledge 515 tefillot. There is a secret behind that. And the secret to it, we can learn from the Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatzera. Who was Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatzera? Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatzera born in the city of Tiflat in Morocco. He born 216 years ago. He also have the nickname Abir Yaakov. That's his nickname, Abir Yaakov. He wrote a famous book, Pituhe Hotam, amazing book. Pituhe Hotam, it's a book on Parshat Shavu, amazing book. I recommend it to everyone. If you can read it in Hebrew, you'll see a different level. You'll see a different level. What does it mean, a rabbi? It, 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 it's mind-boggling to read that book. And there he explained that Moshe Rabbeinu tell Bnei Israel that he davened, that he pledged to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to allow them to enter Eretz Israel. But there is a secret behind it. Why 550? And we say that Vait Hanan Gematria, the Gematria of Vait Hanan, Tfila, Shira, we say that it's 515. He say, you know why? HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Moshe Rabbeinu Dav and 515 Tfilot. Because Tfilah is 515, 
Gematria is to teach Bnei Israel when you're standing and davening to Akadosh Baruch Hu, that you should make your pray tefillah. What it means tefillah? That vayet hanan. You must beg. You must pledge to Akadosh Baruch Hu. When you daven to Akadosh Baruch Hu, you must ask, not demand. What it means ask and not demand? There's many people say to in the davening Mishma Kolenu, Akadosh Baruch Hu, send me parnasa. What it means, send me parnasa? You speak like this to the Almighty, to the Creator, the King of the King. Akadosh Baruch Hu, send me parnasa. What does He owe you anything? Say the mefashim when you dive into Akadosh Baruch Hu. When you want to ask parnasa, when you ask to want to ask for help, you dive into Akadosh Baruch Hu. Akadosh Baruch Hu, please give me a good health that I can study Torah that with that health, I can study Torah, I can learn Torah, I can dive into you. That means that everything must be tahanunim. Tahanunim is pledge. We must pledge to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Another idea, we say that Vayet Hanan, Gematria Shira, 515 also, that when you dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that you should sing to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a davening. How important is it when people's singing, when they're davening to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Many people think that the davening is to bring the, 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 the Kehillah together. Yes, it is. But it's more to praise HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And many of the Hazanim took it to a different level to show the beautiful voice. But it's wrong. In Sefer Hasidim, Rabbi Eliezer Azikri, what he wrote about the Hazanim that actually singing to show the beautiful voice, what punishment they'll get. He said the opposite. The Hazan, when he's singing with his beautiful voice, he have in mind to encourage the Tzibur, okay, to dive into a Kadosh Baruch Hu, to praise a Kadosh Baruch Hu, not to show his beautiful voice. Say the Abir Yaakov. Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatshah, when you davening to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, sing to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That means when you sing into HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you praising him. And that's the Chochmah. And that's where was the secret before, behind the five and, 515. That means that Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to teach us something very important. For the future generation, when you daven, don't think that thing is automatically, you can press button, like you press enter on a computer. Sometimes people pray, say, I pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but he never answer me. And Hazal tell us, what does it mean? There is no pray that go for nothing. Every pray, take one brick of the wall until you demolish all the plaster, the bricks, and the other side of the plaster, and then you create it a whole, and then the prosperity can come. That means every prey is a chip on a wall until you penetrate. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu tried to tell us, not to give up. <laughs> also, if we take the word, Ba'etai le'emor, it's in a pasuk, Va'et hanan el Adonai, Ba'et ha'i le'emor. If we take those last three words and the acronym on the Rashi Tevot, Bet, Hey, Lamed, what does it mean? Halev. That means the heart. It says when you're davening to Akadosh Baruch Hu, and that's the most difficult of all time. When you're davening to Akadosh Baruch Hu, you're davening, like Hazal say in a Gemara in Masechet Ta'anid, in page two, folio two. Tfilah shebalev. What it means, tfilah shebalev, that the pray should be the work, the worship of your heart. That means that you should worship your heart and you should worship your mind to the Almighty. And that's the most difficult. That means whatever you say in your mouth should be in your heart. Because many of us, when we're davening, sometimes we're not doing it on purpose. I'm speaking for me, you old tzaddik. Suddenly you're thinking about something and the next thing you say to yourself, where I am? I'm in Modim. If it wasn't Modim to bow down, I wouldn't even remember. Why? Because we're diving automatically. 
הקדוש ברוך הוא doesn't want automatic pilot, הקדוש ברוך הוא doesn't want robot, we're not a robot. From here we learn something important, said the, the Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatzir, that when you daven to a Kadosh Baruch Hu, daven to him from the heart, mehalev. What it means mehalev? From the bottom of your heart. Focus, focus with what you say. And that's what it means, just a little bit of on the first verse, that call, Bait Hanan El Hashem El Adonai Bait Ha'ilemo. Now I would like to move to verse 25. And in verse 25, it says something very hey, interesting. Can I ask you something? Yes, sure. When you say daven from the heart, pray from your heart, does that mean that you should use your siddur or should you daven yourself? Oh, excellent question. Because you, don't, excellent. you don't always understand the tefillot, especially if you read them in Hebrew. Excellent question. Excellent, excellent question. And I'll tell you a story. You all, all of you heard about the late Arab Hakaduri. Arab Hakaduri. He was the one to tell me, because I was, when I came to South Africa 25 years ago, yeah, 25 years, uh, no, sorry, I came to South Africa 32 years ago. 25 years ago, I asked Rabbi Kaduri, should I go back to Eretz Israel or not? He was the greatest Kabbalistic, Zecher Tzadik V'Kadosh Levracha, and he said, no, he told me to stay in South Africa. That was his answer to me. He given me some reason, but that's not for now. And most of the Mekubalim and Hazal tell us that even if you know the davening of Bahat, Ivan, you should daven from the Sidu. For two reasons. Hazal tell us that word milim mahkimot, otiot mahkimot, the letters make you smart. But behind that, when you're davening from the Siddur and you read it in your mouth, you know where you are and you're focusing on it. When you're davening off by heart, it's like automatically, you're saying it, but your brain is at a different place. It's different when looking at the otiot, otiot is the letters, you follow what I'm saying? Then to say it of my heart. Very good question. It's very important to daven from the Siddur. Shakur, well done. That's a beautiful, I never thought to explain that, but thank you for asking. And it's a great, great idea. Daven from the Siddur, even if you know it of my heart. And I'm sure that all of you, if I wake you up in the middle of the night at Ansesh, Sesh Munaisre, Tfilat Amida, all of you can say it of my heart. The Hochmano. Read it from the Siddur. Word by word, that's the idea. And that's Avodah Shebalev. Why? Because you focus in the heart and the mind to the Almighty. Okay, Ivan, the Seder, Shukur. Let's move to verse 25. In verse 25, it says like this. Ha'eberana bere'eh et ha'aretz ha'tova asher be'ever ha'yarden ha'har ha'tova zeh ve'ha'levanon. Let me now cross and see the good land that is on the other side of the Jordan, this good mountain and the, and the Lebanon. Okay, if you look at this verse, here Moshe Rabbeinu asked HaKadosh Baruch Hu to cross the Jordan Valley to enter the land of Eretz Israel to see the land of Eretz Israel. I don't understand. If you cross the land of Eretz Israel, obviously, surely that you see the land of Eretz Israel. So why do you have to say, let me cross the land of Eretz Israel and to see the land of Eretz Israel? Hmm. Why, why, why Moshe have to say, allowed me to cross the Jordan Valley, allowed me to enter the land of Eretz Israel, and then let me see the land of Eretz Israel? Obviously, if you enter Eretz Israel, you see, uh, you see the land of Eretz Israel. That question been asked by the Kutzak Rebbe, a Rabbi Mikutzak. Who was the Rabbi Mikutzak? Rabbi Menachem Mendel Morgenstern. He born in Poland 234 years ago. And he wrote in his book, 
that it's a commentary on the Torah called Ahal Torah. He said that obviously, he asked that question that obviously if you enter Eretz Israel, you'll see the land of Eretz Israel. If Moshe Rabbeinu say that, say the Kutzak Rebbe, there's something behind us to teach us a Musa, especially if the Torah bringing it. Why? Because if the Torah tell us what Moshe Rabbeinu say, the Torah wouldn't waste words. There is no one word in the Torah that wasted. So he said like this. He said that here Moshe Rabbeinu come to teach us a very important thing. That in every little thing in life, we should dive into a Kadosh Baruch Hu, whatever happened to us, to see the goodness in everything that happened to us in life. And Moshe Rabbeinu here tell Bnei Israel before the entering the land of Eretz Israel, it was in the end of the 40 years, just before the entering Eretz Israel, that when you entering the land of Eretz Israel, look at the good part of Eretz Israel, look at the good side of Eretz Israel. Don't look at the bad side of Eretz Israel. So said the Kutzak Rebbe, and everything in life, each person, each individual, should dive into a Kadosh Baruch Hu, that I could, and ask a Kadosh Baruch Hu to show him the good thing that's happening to him and everything that he do. Many people will ask, listen, I need Parnasa. What's not so good about it? We don't know. I can't give you an answer because I'm not the son of a prophet. But I can tell you one thing. If you dive into a Kadosh Baruch Hu in depth and you ask him from the bottom of your heart, Akadosh Baruch Hu, Bevakasha, please, I beg you, show me why what I'm asking I'm not really receiving. And then you'll see. And a matter of fact, I tell you a fact. A fact. I tried it. I tried it numerous times and I got few answers. And many things that I ask, it's happened. If you dive into a Kadosh Baruch Hu in the depths to show you, to give you certain things, but from the bottom of your heart, you'll get it. My wife said to me once, you're davening for your student all the time. You're davening for everyone. And she asked me, why do I don't get? She wanted something specific. I said to her, you do get. You just have to see when it's coming. And I promise you, not a week later, whatever she wanted, Akadosh Baruch Hu brought it to her. She didn't saw it, but he brought it to her via the back door. And I said, here is it in the front of you, you see. We have to dive into Akadosh Baruch Hu to see the good in everything. But we have to ask Akadosh Baruch Hu to open our eyes to see it. That's the Chochmah. That whatever we get, we have to dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu that will show us the good and everything that we have. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu here tried to teach Bnei Israel. Not only that I will cross the land of Eretz Israel. Obviously, if I cross the land, if I cross the Jordan Valley, I'll enter Eretz Israel, I will see Eretz Israel. But he said, What do you mean, I wanted to see the good in the land. I want to see the good in everything that happened. And that's the message here, say the Kutsa Kerebe. With your permission, let's move to chapter 4, verse 2. And this is a quite interesting thing that the Torah tells us that Moshe Rabbeinu tells the Jewish people. And it's like this. Chapter 4, verse 2. Lo tosifu ala davar asher anochim etzave etchem, otchem, velo tigreo mimeno lishmor et mitzvot Adonai Eloechem, asher anochi metzave etchem. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor shall you subtract from it, to observe the commandments of Hashem, your God, and I command you. Okay, here we see that Moshe Rabbeinu tell Bnei Israel that they're not allowed to, number one, add up on the mitzvot, whatever we got, 613 mitzvot, you're not allowed to add up, 
but you're not also allowed to subtract. And if you look at it clearly, you can say, listen, what's happening here? Akadosh Baruch Hu given us 613 mitzvot. Not to subtract, I can understand, but why not to add up? What's wrong with add up extra mitzvot? That question, I brought it in previous showroom number of time, I bring different opinion. Today, I wanna to bring a different idea that brought by Rabbi Ovadia Misforno. Rabbi Ovadia Misforno born in a city that called Cesena. Cesena, it's a city in the north of Italy. He born around 551 years ago. Rabbi Ovadia Misforno was a great scholar person, great rabbi, that he wrote commentary on the Torah and it's called the Sforno. Sforno, it's a commentary that's been accepted by all the rabbi, by all of Hazal, that you see how giant he was. In his profession, Rabotai, the Sforno was a doctor. So you can imagine, to be a doctor and to write commentary on a Torah. When do you have time? Very similar to the Rambam. Both of the, Ram, the Ramban and the Rambam, both of them, there was doctors. So you see from here that even if profession people can write commentary on a Torah. So he say like this, he say, I can understand why not to subtract because that's mitzvot from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. but I don't understand why not to add up on a mitzvot. Why is it so different if I add up? Why the Torah tell us not to add up mitzvot? And listen what he say, and from here you can understand. He say like this, he say that the Torah, one of the mitzvot that the Torah tell us, and he brings sample from Shlomo Amelech, King Solomon. The Torah tell us a king have three mitzvot that he's not allowed to do. He obviously have to keep all the mitzvot, but there's three mitzvot that he's not allowed to do that when other normal people can have. Lo yarbelo nashim, he's not allowed to have many women. Lo yarbelo susim, he's not allowed to have a lot of horses. Velo yarbelo kesef, vemamon, that he mustn't have a lot of money. Shlomo Amelech, that was the smartest man from whoever was exist on this world. No one was smart as, Moshe, as Shlomo Amelech. Shlomo Amelech married, we all know, a thousand women. And Hazal explained, you know why Shlomo Amelech married a thousand women? Because Shlomo wanted to bring the world to the final. What it means to the final? That Mashiach will come. So he decided he'll marry a thousand women, some of them not Jewish, and he'll take the opportunity, he'll take that opportunity and he'll convert them. And the kids that will come from them, they're gonna be Jewish. That means that the entire world will be Jewish and then the thing is finished, then the Mashiach come. But the Torah tell us lot to sifu, you're not allowed to add up. And if it wasn't, the 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 sforno that bringing it, I would be so careful. I would be I would be scared to say it about Shlomo Amelech. He said that Shlomo Amelech tried to be more smart than the Torah. But you have to understand, the Torah is not a human being written. It's not a book that been written by a human being. It's a book that been written by the Almighty. And the Almighty know what's good for us, what's not good for us. And if he given us 600 Taryag mitzvot, 613 mitzvot, that's enough. He said like this, when Shlomo tried to become more clever than the Torah, that was his downfall. And we know that for every one of those Averot that he done, he lost his kingdom for one year that Shlomo Amelech for three years, he lost his kingdom. Lo yarbel on Hashim, you're not allowed to have many women. The second one, sorry, lo yarbel on Susim, not allowed to have many horses. 
number three, לא יהיה הרבה לו כסף וממון. Mustn't have a lot of money and treasure. With that, for those three that he add up, Shlomo HaMelech been punished. That's according to his level. That's Shlomo HaMelech, not us. It's come to tell us that when a Kadosh Baruch Hu tell you a mitzvah and a Torah, people have to be careful. People have to be so careful not to add up. And I'm going to bring you what the Rambam say. The Rambam say, and I brought it on previous shorim, and many of the Mefarshim explain that Adam Arishon, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him, Lot tuchal me'etzadat, you're not allowed to eat from the tree of knowledge. What did he tell Hava? You're not allowed to eat from the tree of knowledge and you're not allowed to touch the tree of knowledge. HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't say that. Adam Arishon added up. Said the Mefarshim that when the snake pushed Hava to the tree of knowledge and she didn't die, he said to her, you see, you touch the tree of knowledge and you're not dead. No one said that when you touch the tree of knowledge, you will die. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Adam Arishon not to eat, but he tried to make more of it, to add up. He said not to touch, and that was the mistake. In the end, both of them, Lo alenu kelebs with that. It's come to teach us, the Mefarshim tell us that from here you learn something very important. How much you have to be careful, okay, not to add up on a mitzvot of the Torah. But, but Rav, before I come, wait, 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 give me one second, even one second, one second. As I'll explain, in that case, but we have a lot of mitzvot that it's not a mitzvot, is what we call gderot. And that's what when people make a mistake. For example, mukte, it's not from the Torah. Mukte is Rabbanan. It's mukte, is a mitzvah or not a mitzvah? No, mukte, it's not a mitzvah, Rabotai. Mukte, Every one of you know what is mukta. I don't have to explain. Everyone understand what is mukta. It's a gader. What does it mean a gader? A prevention. But it's not a mitzvah. I hope that's what you wanted to ask, Stephen. So Hazal explained that from here you learn that mukta is not a mitzvah. Mukta is a gader. What is gader? is a fence to prevent you from doing any other avarot. Mukta, it's not mitzvah from the Torah. Hazal come and tell us that they'll know if we allow, for example, to touch our cell phone on Shabbat, we're going to switch it on. Switching on, going to teach us to speak, to watch. That's a difference between mitzvah and gderot. Okay, I hope that I make myself clear. Good. Let's continue. Rav, sorry, can, yeah? can I just ask a question? But then that's what Adam did. He he made a good. Uh, he didn't really add. He just he uh, he 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 had a good a, a getter, so they they wouldn't touch it. No, no, he didn't say getter. He said to the Takadosh Baruch Hu say. This, uh, okay. Not to eat and not to touch. There is a uh -huh. difference. There to Hava. But, but, but that, that's what that's what Hava said. Uh, Adam didn't say that. Adam said to her that yeah. you should not touch and you should not yeah. eat. Ah, how, okay, good. How did the knight manage to convince her? By pushing her to the tree. Uh -huh. she yeah. Got it, got it. Oh, no. Okay. Let's move now with your permission. I'm going to speak about the 10 command. The 10 command, you know what? Now let's do one more in, in uh, chapter four. I know that the time is late. Let's do one more. I would like to go to verse five before, before um, we'll move to the 10 command. It's in uh, chapter four, verse five. See, I have taught you decrees and ordinance as Hashem, my God, has commanded me to do so in the midst of the, of the land in which you, 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 you claim to possess it. 
Okay, here we see that Moshe Rabbeinu tell the children of Israel before the entering the land of Eretz Israel, look, Akadosh Baruch Hu command me to teach you all the laws, all the mitzvot, everything. And I taught you everything. And immediately all the Mepharshim say, whoa, 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 what's happening at Moshe? Why do you have to repeat and telling them what? They don't know. They know, you told them all the mitzvot. Why do you come and telling them now, before they enter the land of Eretz Israel, Kadosh Baruch Hu to teach you mitzvot, to teach you the law. I'm teaching you all the laws and the mitzvot. What is the chokhmah? What? They don't know. What's hiding behind it? The question is, what's the hidush here? And I saw a beautiful commentary of the Benish Hai. Who was the Benish Hai? The Benish Hai, his name is Rabbi Yosef Haim. Rabbi Yosef Haim, born in the city of Baghdad around 187 years ago. He was a great scholar person. He was a great Kabbalistic rabbi. And he wrote a lot of book on all different, on all different subject of the Torah. And all the pardes, pshat, remez, drash, sot, kabbalah. As a matter of fact, I was studying the other day, the Benish Hai, they called the book the Benish Hai. When I said the other day, I'm talking about maybe two years ago. And uh, after the davening, after Mariv, I used to sit in a corner by myself to focus, you know, quietly. And uh, one of the, the guy came and he and looked at me and he said, you're studying Benish Hai. I said, yes, did you read it? He said, yeah, it's a very depth book. He said to me, I think that it's a Kabbalah. I said, no, 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 no. The Benish Hai is not Kabbalah. This is the easier book that he had. If that you think that this is heavy, you didn't even see what the Benish Hai, how depth is it. And, and the Benish Hai explains something important on that place. He said, you know what's the Hiddush on this verse? That Moshe Rabbeinu coming and telling Bnei Israel that the Kadosh Baruch Hu command him to teach all the Torah to Bnei Israel, he said like this. And he bring analogy and he said like this. He said, if there is a craftsman, whatever profession is it, in every profession, that profession, he have apprentice. And that apprentice, when he come into the craftsman, to the master, whatever you want to call it, he will teach him the profession. But in the profession, that person always will keep for him something that he'll be above the apprentice. Why? That he always going to be the best. Moshe Rabbeinu come and tell Ben Yisrael, listen, HaKadosh Baruch Hu given me all the Torah. I teach you everything that I can do. Not only that, Hazal and Gemar and Masechet Nedarim, Lamed Het Amud Aleph, 38, 41. Say that Moshe Rabbeinu been taught the Pilpul. HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't tell them to teach the Chochmat Pilpul to Israel. Hazal and Gemara say that Moshe Rabbeinu took the Chochmat Pilpul. What is Pilpul? That you take one, they tell you something, and you take it, and you go to the depths of it, you ask a question, you answer a question, makshe, metaret, metaret, makshe, that's pilpul. You take something and you question on it and you answer it. He said that HaKadosh Baruch Hu taught Moshe Rabbeinu Chochmat pilpul, and he didn't ask him to teach Bnei Yisrael. He said that all the pilpul that you see in the world today, because Moshe Rabbeinu took that Chochmat that HaKadosh Baruch Hu given him and he passed it to Israel, to the children of Israel. So Moshe Rabbeinu come to the children in Israel and said to them, when you're learning Torah, don't be like those craftsmen, like those masters that try to be always and above. Teach everything that you know. That means every rabbi, every teacher, when he teaches student, he must teach his, teacher, his student everything that he can. Everything that he's able to teach, everything that he knows, he must teach. He mustn't keep nothing for himself. And that's what it says, Re'e, limadeti otchem, hukimu mishpatim. Ka'asher tzivani Hashem. Whatever HaKadosh Baruch Hu taught me, I pass it to you. That you must learn for the future. When it's come, you also must pass it all the Torah. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna speak about the 10 command. The 10 command is a, a matter of fact, it's in chapter five. You can find it in chapter five, verses six to verse 18. And it speak about the 10 command. And I'm not gonna read, I'm just gonna give you a few ideas about it. What is the 10 command? The 10 command, the first time that we read about them, Rabotai, is in Parashat Yitro, the first time. The second time is in this parsha. And we have to understand why did Moshe Rabbeinu repeat it? We, we already received it after 50 days from the day that we left Egypt. That means on the 50th days from the day that they left Egypt, if you count 49 on the 50 days, it's Shavuot, that's when we received. And the 6th of Sivan, Beshishi Besivan, we received the Torah. So in Parashat Yitro, we already read about the Ten Command. Why again in Parashat Vait Hanan, Moshe Rabbeinu repeat all the Ten Command? That's made one of the questions that many of the Mefarshim ask. And I saw in a book that called Doresh Tzion. Doresh Tzion is a book that's been written by Arab Ben Tzion Mutsafi Shalita. And he explained that we received the Torah straight after the it is from Egypt 50 days. And there, what does it say on the first command? He say, Anochi Hashem Elokecha Asher Otsetich Ameret Mitzray. Moshe Rabbeinu say that people might gonna think that the 10 command been given only to who? To those that left Egypt. Why? Because it say, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I'm your almighty God that took you out of Egypt. People will come and think that the Ten Command is only for that generation that kept out of Egypt, for the, those that lived for 40 years in the wilderness. Now, the new generation, after 40 years that entering to Eret Israel, they can say, listen, the Ten Command doesn't applicable to us because it's here on the Ten Command. Moshe Rabbeinu come and say, uh-uh. Baruch Abiki. I'm going to say it again to tell you that the Ten Command, a matter of fact, it's not only, it's not only for that generation that left Egypt. No, not at all. The Ten Command applicable to you, the same like it's applicable to the generation that died in a wilderness, the generation that left Egypt. And that's the main reason that Moshe Rabbeinu repeat the Ten Command just before Bnei Israel entering the land of Eretz Israel. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with that, but there is, I'm going to bring 10, and I'm quoting the Kliyakar. The Kliyakar, Rabbi Shlomo Ephraim Milont, he born in Poland 481 years ago, and he wrote commentary on the Torah that's called Kliyakar. And he bringing 10 different differences between, between the Ten Command in Parashat Yitro Parashat Vait Hanan. That mean that there is, the command is the same command, but they've been told in a different way on different world. There is also explanation to that. Maybe please God, next show, I'll do it with you on it, because it's gonna take at least another hour just to understand the difference between them. And the first explanation it say that when you speak about the Shabbos, in Parashat Yitzro, it says, Zachor et Yom HaShabbat Lekadesho. Zachor, remember the Shabbos day to sanctify it. He says in Parashat Vait Hanan, it says, Shamor et Yom HaShabbat Lekadesho. That means you must guard, you must keep the Shabbos to sanctify it. There is one Shamor and one Zachor. Just quick about them because there is two angels. Shamor and Zachor be dibur ehad. This is uh, on the top. I don't want to go in depth. Other thing that he bring in Parashat Vait Hanan, when it speak about the, 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 the Shmirat HaShabbat and also the honoring your parents, what is that he added up in Parashat Vait Hanan? Ka'asher tzivecha Hashem Eloecha. That mean that in Parashat Yitro, when he speak about the Shabbos, when it speak about honoring your parents, he didn't say Ka'asher Tzivecha Hashem Eloecha. He didn't say like the Almighty command you. Only in Parashat Vait Hanan he said that. 
The third thing that he bring that the, in Parashat we draw, he given a reason for Shmirat HaShabbat, why we should keep Shabbos. And he say like this, Ki sheshet yamim asa Hashem et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. That means that the main fundamental idea for us to understand why we obligate to keep Shabbos is because the Almighty created the world on six day. And on the seventh day, he stops. In Parashat, <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, my throat was, <coughs> was dry. In Parashat Vait Hanan, he's he bringing a different reason. What is his term? He said the fundamental idea of keeping Shabbos, it's not because the six days, like it's mentioned on Parashat Itro, it's because you were slave in Egypt. All different different uh, differences that there is between, between the Ten Command. Then he continued, it say in Parashat Yitro, it say Lot Ahmod, that you should not covet. In Parashat, in Parashat Bait Hanan, it doesn't say Lot Ahmod, it say Lot Eve, that you should not desire. Different wording. We see that uh, there's more, I'm gonna bring a few more, in Parashat Bait Hanan, when it's speaking about Shmirat HaShabbat, he add up there that Lema'an Yanua Sholcha V'Hamocha, that means that your ox and your donkey should rest. He add it up in Parashat Vayit Hanan. While in Parashat Vayit Roy, it's you know, just Shamorot HaShabbat. And uh, also he bring another one, another idea, that when it's come to honoring the parents, your parents, in Parashat Vayit Roy, it's Lema'an Ya'arichun Yamecha. That means you know why you should obligate it to respect your parents? That if you respect your parents, you have a long life. And Parashat Vait Hanan, he added up not only that you should have a long life, he added up that you're going to benefit from it. Not only that you should have a long life, you're also going to benefit from it. In Parashat Vait Hanan, uh, in our parsha, he added up on, on when it's come to you should not covet lot ahmod. He add up lot ahmod sadeu. That mean that you're not allowed to desire to covet the what do you call it? The field of your friend. In Parashat Yitzro, he said that when it's come lot ahmod, he said bet reicha, and then he said ve'eshet reicha. In Parashat Bait Hanan, he said first, your, the wife of your friend, and then he said, Bet Reicha, the house. That means that it's been said up, exactly the opposite, the one in front of the other. Again, when it say in Parashat Yitro, it say, Lo ta'ane beracha et shakir. That when it's come, that you should not give it a false testimony. And Parashat Bait Hanan, he say, that you should not lot et shav. That you should not be uh, like a no witness. Okay, the final one that he bring in Parashat Yitro. Listen to that. It say lot irtzah, lot inaf, lot ignov, lot ta'ane beracha et shaker, lot ahmod bet reicha, lot ahmod eshet reicha. He say in Parashat Vayit Hanan. Listen to that. He said that all of those. It says velo tirtzah. That means that they add up the latest vav. Velo tignov. Velo velo tinaf, and etc. Why is that? So just to give you a tip on the top that Hazal say that here it's come to tell you that there is vav. How many vav there is here? Four. He said that if you take it, it's come to tell you that if you take those four times the six, okay, four times six will give you 24, if I'm not mistaken. It's come to tell you that if you're going to keep all of those, you're going to be blessed with all 24 times more. So from here, we see that the difference that there is between Parashat Yitro, the Ten Command and Parashat Yitro, and the Ten Command and Parashat Vayit Hanan, I just wanted to share it with you. Now I'm going to give time for questions.
Any question, Rabotai? If you have, please unmute yourself. Bechavot. Any well, just question? Make a comment, Rob, just to thank you. Oh, oh Dr. Lez, how just are you? Just to thank you. What an amazing year. Wow. Thank you. Shukua. You must be tired, Rob. That's over an hour. Sure, that was incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Shukua. Thank you. Anyone, anyone want to ask a question? No question. Okay. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, that we should all merit to keep the mitzvot, the Tariyag mitzvot, the Ten Command, Be'ezrat Hashem, that we should all merit to keep them. And then Akadosh Baruch Hu will send us Messiah Titkenu and will build the third Beit Amikdash speedily in our day, Amen Ken Yeratzon. On Sunday, this coming Shabbos is to Be'av. Be'ezrat Hashem, on Sunday, I will speak about Tu Be'av, Im HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give us the strength and the power that will explain what is Tu Be'av. Why is it, why Dafka, if Tu Be'av fall during the week, we don't say Tahanu. <laughs> tu Be'av is the day that we don't say Tahanu. This Shabbos, obviously on Shabbat, we don't say Tahanu, we don't do anything that show mourning. But if it will fall, to Be'av during the week, we don't say Tahanun, we don't show any more. As will explain why, what is so special about To Be'av. We bring the Gemara, we bring the Mishnayot, and we'll try to explain what's happening to Be'av that it's so important. In the meantime, I would like to take the opportunity to wish all of you Shabbat Shalom, please God. Today is the coldest night, and it was the coldest day all of that winter. And you know, my daughter was in Issaquah. Issaquah is in Seattle, in America. And she said to me, what we think is cold, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the spring, <laughs> she said to us. She said to me, we don't see the sun <laughs> for all of winter. They have, do you know how long is their summer? I actually couldn't understand. The summer, it's virtually between one and a half months to two months. That's all day summer. They don't sure. see after that. They don't see after that yeah. the sun like we see. Seattle is all the time raining. We don't understand that. Cloudy, misery, freezing. <laughs> we have to thank Sakadosh Baruch We really have to thank Sakadosh Baruch so I would like to wish all of you to keep warm tonight, keep safe, <laughs> wishing you a great Shabbat of Tu Be'av that Lo ayu yamim tovim li Yisrael ke Tu Be'av v'kiyom ha-kippurim. Listen to that. Tu Be'av compared to Yom Kippur. We'll see why. Be'ezrat Hashem on Sunday to wish you all Shabbat Shalom umvorechet. Bless you all. That Kadosh Baruch Hu will bless us and guard us. All the best. Good night. Well, you have a good show, uh, good Thank Shabbos, Rolf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bad news uh, is uh, it's going to go over the whole weekend. The cold, it's not going to okay. disappear. Yeah, okay, but yeah. it's not going to be so long. cold. Like, um, all the best. Stay Shabbat warm, shalom. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. Shabbat shalom. Thank you so much, Colton. Okay.